At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the derivation of maximum likelihood estimation, describe the use of derivation in linear regression, and appreciate the significance of derivation of maximum likelihood estimation in linear regression. Although in the past lessons, especially in our playlist, Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm and Deep Learning Algorithm, we talked about maximum likelihood estimation. In this playlist, we also discuss the maximum likelihood estimation because I believe that we don't need to break the flow of our thoughts and we can just follow very easily and we don't need to close this playlist and go back to other playlists. So this is why I have decided to just incorporate this lesson into this playlist. So our understanding would be smooth because our concept is always related to linear regression and not any other machine learning model. So before we continue, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there because we do have a lot of video lessons for you guys. We have Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm, Deep Learning Algorithm, Natural Language Processing, the different algorithms, the different data science tips that can help you move forward in your data science journey. So we have the negative log likelihood. So how is this connected to maximum likelihood estimation? So let's remember that in maximum likelihood estimation, we are actually identifying the parameters for our model. And these parameters, we said it could be the maximum. And we said this can also be the minimum. And so we said that when we use maximum, the tendency would be that we would overshoot. Whereas when we take smaller steps, then we could use minimum and the learning rate of our model would be smoother. So this is why we use the negative log likelihood to identify the minimum points to be used for our parameters of our model. So when we say the negative log likelihood, it is actually a cost function. Let me write this one here, cost function. And when we say cost function, it is about the loss of a certain model. And so this tells us how bad or how good our model is performing. And of course, because we are dealing with the negative log likelihood, we always prefer to have the lower one. Okay, so I'm going to give you the steps on how to get the negative log likelihood. This intuition is actually enough for us to be able to understand what's going on behind our maximum likelihood estimation using the negative log likelihood. So first and foremost, we have here our mathematical expression of the NLL or short for the negative log likelihood. And we use this kind of form so that it would be easier for us to do the differentiation. So we have here NLL that is with respect to W because we are getting the parameter W. So one half of the quantity Y minus X W then the transpose of this one. So if you could still remember in our lesson in mastering machine learning algorithm, we discussed about what this transpose is. And we also talked about and discussed the process of doing this one. And in fact, we had real numbers for this. So I suggest please watch that lesson. And when we do, of course, the next thing of processing this part of our mathematical process, then we can arrive at this one, okay? And we have here some terms that we need to discuss. For example, we have, what is this one? So what this one is all about. So for better understanding, let's have this next part of our discussion. So. The x transpose x, the one that you could find in here, is actually this one, okay? So as you could see, this is again in matrix form. So you could see here the diagonal. And in the diagonal, you could see the squared form of x. And of course, processing these terms, we could get this one x t or x transpose y also. So this means the sum of squares of matrix, sum of squares matrix, matrix, 
So these things are really very important when we would like to process this formula, when we would like to process our data, especially when we are going to get the gradient. And let's remember this that in gradient, we always, always identify whether or not we are going to get the maximum or the minimum depending on the kind of data science case that we have. So but then because we are concerned with the negative log likelihood then of course we are getting the minimum. So when we are going to process all of these things then we could arrive at the gradient of W and the gradient of W says that we do the multiplication of x transpose x and w then minus x transpose y as you could see this one right and then here but only that we multiply the parameter w okay so if we are going to process and if we are going to equate this one to zero then we will get this one and this is what we call the normal equation normal equation so if you could still remember our lesson when we talked about the ordinary least squares, this is actually the form of our ordinary least square. Actually, this is its corresponding form for the maximum log likelihood. What is this for? Why do we have to study this? In optimization problems, we always prefer to minimize the cost function. To do it, we use the negative log likelihood function. It is also very important in our study of gradient descent in identifying the local and the global minima. After all, being said and done, let's try this. What is negative log likelihood? How is negative log likelihood used in maximum likelihood estimation? What is the significance of negative log likelihood in linear regression? Please don't forget to write your answers in the comment down below so that we would be able to learn from each other and our interaction would be very much alive. Do you want to know more about this channel? Just click the card on your right screen. You can enjoy our deep learning, mastering machine learning algorithm, natural language processing courses, and also you can learn our data science tips and a lot about the different algorithms of machine learning and deep learning. You can always learn and upskill for free.